Blackbeard has three balls. What? Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are back on our ever-consistent hunt to find the wackiest weirdest fan theories on this thing that we call the internet. And right off the bat, I want to emphasize that I am not interested in theories that sound in any way reasonable. Every other One Piece content creator can cover all of that kind of stuff, but what I want are the strangest left field ideas imaginable, while still maintaining a potential thread of possibility. For example, Zoro didn't actually lose his eye, he just keeps it closed to look cooler. Which is utter, utter madness, but at the same time, utter, utter logic. Because we know that Zoro is a surprisingly superficial being, such as when he made sure to strike a pose during Little Garden to protect his wax statue legacy. So would Zoro keep his eyes closed for purely aesthetic reasons? Yes, yes he would. Now as is the thing that it is that we do, all of these crazy theories today are going to come straight from members of the Grand Fleet. And if you'd like to know how your comment can be shown in one of these videos, then the first step is hitting that juicy, plump subscribe button for the Grand Line Review, which will result in regular injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed, as well as keep you up to date with all of our community posts that you can comment on, like this one. Also, YouTube does tell me which users have subscribed, so I'm not saying that I give preferential treatment to Grand Fleet members, but I do give preferential treatment to Grand Fleet members. So please do say hi down in the comments below if you are a new member, welcome. Also very excitingly, at some stage during this video, I am going to tell you how you can win this limited edition Nami figure where she just so happens to be cosplaying as Luffy. Another exciting Grand Line giveaway to come. But right now, I want to hear some of your crazy theories and we are going to start with, Vegapunk knows too much about devil fruits because he is a fruit. He's a fruit in a suit. And I'm not going to lie, that little rhyme is pretty much the only reason why I decided to include this quote unquote theory. The whole Vegapunk devil fruit thing has always been quite a nice source of intrigue though. I mean, granted, I've, oh, I've never seen this incarnation of it, but it's been proposed throughout the ages that he's consumed some sort of devil fruit that increased his intelligence by an order of magnitude. Sort of like the intelligence boost that Chopper received upon consuming the Hito Hito no Mi, except I suppose something a bit more beyond human, like Sengoku's devil fruit, which transforms him into a giant Buddha. But in this case, this is pretty much exactly what I asked for. And also this has an added element of crazy because if Vegapunk was in fact a quite literal fruit, then it would go along way towards explaining this insane silhouette, which I've always referred to as something of an aubergine head. Also fun fact, eggplants, fruit, not vegetable, which completely blew my mind about 15 minutes ago when I Googled it. All Ds can eat multiple devil fruits, but nobody tried because devil fruit is actually D evil fruits and Kozuki are secret Ds. All right, we're just gonna slap all new crazy theory onto the end of that already crazy theory. But let's tackle the first part first because doing the first thing first, well, makes sense. And I've always been interested by the thought that perhaps just everyone can eat multiple fruits, but nobody's ever tried due to some sort of urban legend. But then again, with someone like Vegapunk on the forefront of Devil Fruit study, you'd think that the idea may have been tested on at least one poor individual by now. But a D specific experiment certainly may not have been conducted as they are quite scarce in supply. Although Hey You has a different theory concerning how Blackbeard may have been able to consume multiple fruits. Blackbeard has three balls. What? I suppose the idea is that each testicle is capable of harnessing a single fruit power, maybe. Although even in that case, most regular human beings should still be able to have two fruit powers, provided they did not lose a jewel in some sort of freak pirating accident. But as for a theory that's along the same sort of a uh, subject matter, when Luffy ends on the island with Boa Hancock and her sisters, I can't remember the island, the mushroom they try to pull off him but can't is actually his gum gum genitals. You see this? this this is not actually a theory. This is just a recap of the Amazon Lily arc. Let's be clear about that. Kuina's sword is a cursed blade and it killed her. Imagine the item that Zoro swore his dream on was the thing that killed his rival. Yeah, oh, dark man. Although pretty much every theory that revolves around Kuina travels down some very dark alleyways. This is kind of interesting though, because I still find it to be a much more satisfying explanation than, oh dear, she just she fell down some stairs one day. Oh no. And also I think it would actually be the first example of a cursed sword in the series actually doing what a cursed sword is meant to do. Because off the top of my head, I can only really think of three, Zoro tamed the Sandai Kitetsu, which was cursed, and Luffy didn't seem to have too many issues with its brother, the Nidai Kitetsu, and Law also uses a cursed sword. So a uh, uh, new theory, maybe curses don't actually exist because we've never seen one doing the thing it's actually meant to do. But our next crazy theory is going to be that you, I think, meaning me, are Sanada the Perv. And okay, wow, 
why would you? This requires so much context, it's not funny. But for anime watchers, and let's be real, probably most manga readers as well, what this commenter is referring to is a man by the name of Yoshikazu Sanada, who often asks Oda perverted questions in the SBS segments of volume releases, usually about characters bathing and having female characters step on him, you know, the uh, the standard stuff. In any case, one really noteworthy thing about Sanada is that he actually holds a Guinness World Record for the largest collection of One Piece memorabilia. His collection is actually 5,656 items, which is of course 5656, the trademark Gomu Gomu number. So look, after having seen this photo, yes, I wish I was Sanada, but sadly, I am not. But if you would like to start your own One Piece memorabilia collection, then the best place to do so would be this Grand Line giveaway, where we have one limited edition cosplaying Nami figure up for grabs. And if you'd like to acquire this glorious piece of One Piece, then all you need to do is subscribe to the Grand Line review and leave a comment below telling me in a concise couple of sentences which One Piece character you would like to cosplay and why. Everyone who enters will be put into a draw and a winner will be announced in a future video. Exact details are listed in the description below. And yes, you do need to be subscribed to enter because remember earlier when I told you that YouTube lets me know who's subscribed and who isn't? Yeah, that's right. But for those of you who are already Grand Fleet members, all you need to do is leave your comment and I look forward to seeing who wins this masterwork. But back to maddeningly crazy theories, next up we have the ring eyes in Eam, Zunesha and Hawkeye are a sign that they have all had the Ope Ope no Mi immortality operation. All right, this one actually is quite interesting. Bordering, not crazy, but we'll go with it. And it's mostly because I think people often forget that we've actually seen Zunesha's eyes. The general image of the elephant tends to be this like black panda right existence. However, Zunesha's eyes do happen to be drawn in the exact same manner as that of Mihawk and Eam. All different colors in the anime as well. Mihawk is obviously yellow, Eam was red, and Zunesha was green. Or I guess a sort of turquoise if you want to have more of a color wank and yes, yes we do. Which is fun because Zunesha is confirmed to be old AF, potentially some sort of immortal existence, but before we get a bit too invested into this idea, it's also important to note that sometimes eyes are just, you know, eyes. Because Cavendish also has these eyes, but only in Hakuba form. So that's a potentially solid indication that this is just sort of some funky Oda style and not at all designed to be connected. Sanji isn't horny, he just seeks love after his rough childhood expressed in his simpness. Ah, uh, yeah, I feel like this is one of those situations where two things can be true at the same time. I'm definitely very much on board with the whole mother complex thing. Sora really was the only positive aspect of Sanji's pre baratier life, and I suppose Reiju as well to a much lesser degree. But the greater point being that the only people who were even remotely kind to Sanji during his Germa days were women. So it makes sense that the only people he just downright refuses to hurt are women. Although he is still an undeniably thirsty, thirsty lad. Shanks is a D, honestly. I don't think it's crazy enough if Roger gave him the hat. Honestly, now that I write it out, not that crazy. Well, if it's not crazy, then I have no interest in it. Mihawk is a vampire devil fruit user. Yes, much better in terms of sheer crazy. Having said that, <laughs> I'm not actually sure how to respond to this. So I did recently make a video about what if Roger was a devil fruit user, which you should definitely check out, but Mihawk inhabits a very similar area. He's the kind of character who I suspect that the general consensus is would just be cooler without a fruit power. You know, the whole idea that being a swordsman is all he has and that's all he needs because that's all the world can handle. With that said, if Oda did decide to reveal that Mihawk was a devil fruit user, you know, tomorrow, then I have no doubt that most of us would be on board by close of business. Oda can just make anything work, even a, a vampire devil fruit using Mihawk. Speaking of Oda though, Oda has actually never been sick. He just takes breaks to figure out how to continue the story. I see, so this is like a, a crazy theory regarding real life. All right, well, here's the fun thing. I don't necessarily disagree with the general sentiment. The cited reason for manga breaks, whether it's One Piece or any other series, is almost always author illness, which isn't surprising because it is a brutal profession. And if anything, it's surprising that mangaka don't get sick or injured far more often. Still, I don't think it's out of the question for an author to just fall behind on this insane workload maybe have a bit of a rough time submitting a manuscript with an editor and just need more time. And sickness is a very convenient excuse that everyone will buy. I just can't quite see it happening with Oda in his particular work ethic though. At least not very often. Okay, Brooke and Kuzan are somehow related by blood. So this is one I've definitely heard before, but I'm going to let Flash Smash, which is actually surprisingly hard to say. I'm going to let Flash Smash answer this one, but he doesn't have blood. 
Yo ho ho. Which uh, honestly is the best skull joke I've ever seen in my comment section. So well done, Flash Mash. I hate your name though. I really hate saying your name. As for the idea of Brooke being related to Kuzan, the theory, uh, I guess it kind of works. If Kuzan was a grandson or a nephew or something, because the time that Brooke spent in the Florian Triangle is quite notably longer than Kuzan has actually been alive. So Brooke would have already needed to have procreated once or have extended family who continued down the line to a future marine. Admiral. The nine shadows in Toki's prophecy refer to Zoro's swords when he uses Ashura. And here we have the ultimate Zoro fanboy dream. Not content with the idea that Zoro will form one of the nine shadows to take down Kaido. No, not enough. Zoro needs to be literally all nine shadows. It's just blatant church of Zoro propaganda and I love it. Luffy will accidentally sit on the empty throne in Marijuana because he is tired from walking around the large palace and it looks like a comfy place to sit. The Gorosei then make the NL face. Uh, it's simultaneously ridiculous yet not at all ridiculous. It's actually really good because it's so easy to see Luffy doing something like this. There is no other character in the series where I would consider this as being, you know, a reasonable idea, but Luffy, well, he'll just do it, won't he? A man who intentionally punched a world noble would certainly accidentally sit on the symbol of world domination. With the world nobles in mind though, Fujitora is the son of a celestial dragon and blinded himself after seeing how they treated others. And I am legitimately bothered by this because because the last two crazy theories have sounded far too reasonable. At first, anyway. I do like this idea at face value, the face being where the eyes often are. And if Fujitora was to see some, you know, really messed up stuff, then hanging around the world nobles would certainly be the place to do so. However, I believe that Fujitora actually speaks with an accent, which would indicate a very different heritage. In the official English translation, Fujitora almost sounds like a Southern American gent, using words like ain't and fella. And I do think it's supposed to be the American localized equivalent of like a Kansai dialect or something. And not to be rude to any Southern Americans who may be listening, but it's probably designed to indicate that he's not quite of noble heritage. The manager at Team Pokemon is actually Liam from Grand Line Reviews. Crazy, I know. Yes, it is crazy. I have no idea what you might be referring to, but we should probably move on to the next theory before people start becoming suspicious. The One Piece is a beautiful mold of treble shriveled naked body. You know what, forget moving on because with that painfully deep detailed uh, image in mind, we're done here. But if you'd like to see some more wild ideas, then please do go and check out the Crazy Theories playlist, plenty of thoughts mixed with 90% madness and 10% genius. So I look forward to seeing you there.